नमस्कार 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 लेट्स मेक इंडिया ग्रेट मेरा भारत महान दिस इज द थीम ऑन गोइंग थीम दैट विल टेक प्लेस एंड दैट इज गोइंग टू टेक प्लेस इन द हैंड्स ऑफ ऑन्टरप्रनर्स सो आई कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट व्यापार जगत टू इग्नाइट द स्पिरिट ऑफ ऑन्टरप्रनरशिप इन इंडिया एंड मेक इंडिया एन ऑन्टरप्रनर नेशन हैविंग सेट दैट today we have a very excellent topic a topic that is dear to me inside the mind of an entrepreneur does such a mind exist where do you find it can we create such minds because once we go about creating the minds of entrepreneurs it will be easy to make india an entrepreneurial nation so we are out and entering a new civilization in the making and for this new civilization we have different models erupting and taking place and understanding this different models we have a excellent panel of people who will join us to take this journey forward this digital civilization that i call it requires a different mindset and how do you travel this journey as being of a entrepreneur is very important for people to understand these fellow under a panelist or entrepreneurs will throw the search light for everyone to see how you can travel on that route so that you don't fall in any pit or come across a big mountain they have crossed the mountains they have crossed the pits and they have chartered a very successful entrepreneurial journey on their own to understand that we have this session very specifically to understand the mind of the entrepreneur because it all begins with the mind the mind gives energy to create a thought the thought creates the idea the idea creates the concept the concept creates the words and finally the words create the action so you have the total lineage of how energy and thought moves from one level to the final level of action so here we are with this great panel of ours let me introduce one by one first the lady dr shubhlakshmi namaskar nitin ji yes namaskar namaskar we have dr shubhlakshmi acharya a behavioral scientist who has created over 15 years a tool called the core mindset mapping tool which is very very important for all entrepreneurs to take it to understand their own business mind and their leadership profile two things that every entrepreneur should know and understand his business mind and his leadership profile because when i interact with my clients i see that i use a tool because you cannot understand a man just in the first go you can understand him when you have his report with him and that report speaks a lot about his behavior and the areas of concern and the areas of strength so with that the journey begins in the conversation stage to take the vision from the lower level to the higher level so this becomes a need and i have made it a compulsory element to understand a human being through the core mindset mapping tool and we have dr shubhlakshmi who will speak a lot about it subsequently in our session then we have out here devesh shaula a unique entrepreneur of the highest order why do i say that he is the youngest ceo who has been recognized in dubai and in an international platform as the best ceo of the year 2019 not only that he has been able to create his own organization called chatur ideas which is instrumental in igniting the spirit of the entrepreneurs across india he has set up the first entrepreneurial school academy 
called the Nurture uh, Enterprise Academy in 125 cities. Can you imagine my friends? And he is a one-stop solution for entrepreneurs to understand how they should take their journey forward. Not only that, Devesh has 1,500 investors lined up so that they can fund the ideas of upcoming entrepreneurs and take their journey to the next level. A unique phenomena amongst the 100 top small industries, he is rated one of them. So let us all invite Devesh to be part of this panel and give some great insights of how to take the journey forward. Come in, Devesh, thank you for joining in. Thank you, look forward. The next panelist is my friend called Pradeep Bhera, a gold see. medalist from IIT Mumbai. Not only one gold medal, but he has achieved two gold medals. Having an experience of 12 years in the pharma industry, he conceived the idea of setting up his own organization, Theta Beta and Algorithms. That's the name, TBA. And Pradeep has been able to instrument this organization and is growing exactly in the manner he has conceived today. So what did he conceive today? With an investment of one crore rupees, he has conceived that his organization will grow to 1,000 crores in 10 years. That is his vision. And he is perfectly moving towards that vision with a lab space of 10,000 square meters in, in Bombay, New Bombay, that is Washi. He is going onward in this journey and his focus is very clear. He will have 50% in Indian clients and 50% international clients. So he's spreading his knowledge, his exclusive knowledge across the world, and he's competing with the best in the world. I welcome Pradeep for this beautiful event today at Vapar Jagat. Thank you, Pradeep, for coming. Thank you, Nitin, sir. Thank you, Nitin, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now let's have all the three panelists together in the Zoom meeting. And let's begin by asking the lady, Shubhlakshmi, how did she start? First and foremost, a brief background about how did she begin the journey of entrepreneurship with Mind Elements? Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Nitin. And uh, uh, all the members out here i'm very happy to see you all on this platform uh, coming to my background uh, prior to my stint in human resource and psychology i worked with uh, the garment industry sector for nearly seven and a half years and wherein i was responsible for overlooking shipments you know in bulk shipments across uh, us and international markets now during this period I extensively interacted with each and every department and understood how an organization functions, what is the process and the flow. But somehow I felt that, uh, you know, that inherent talent in me wasn't much explored, you know, in this industry. And hence, uh, seeing the monotony of work, I shifted to human resources, wherein, again, it was a challenging role where, um, you know, I had to handle talent sourcing. Uh, sourcing can, uh, candidates across management and leadership positions for national and multinational companies, you know, and, uh, you know, to your surprise, every candidate I met was unhappy with his job. Though he was in a large corporate getting a very good salary with perks, he wasn't happy. Somewhere there was something missing. And people at the age of 40 would come and say, you know, I would like to shift my career. I'm not happy, I'm too burnt out, I'm too stressed out. So this um, unhappiness around, it kept piercing my mind. And I felt that this is a very critical issue that needed to be addressed. Otherwise, our country would become an unhappy nation, you know. And that is how I started studying behavioral patterns. 
I realized that there are certain behaviors which enjoy, who are passionate about work, which they are capable of doing and they, they can spend as many hours. And there are certain behavioral patterns which even if they have good qualification and uh, you know good upbringing, but they may not be uh, happy with the job because their mindset wasn't matching the job profile. So this is the stage where core mindset mapping was born, you know, to help individuals link their mindset to the right profile and then provide them to the organization. So it was a win-win situation where we saw a remarkable change, you know, where the candidates were happy and even the organizations were happy. And this was a burning issue for even the HR professionals during that time. And subsequently, I wrote a book, uh, Core Mindsets at Work, which has all these experiences of mine, not all, but many covering uh, 13 industry sectors with 22 live case studies. So there are different behavioral highlights, which if y'all have read, if y'all have not, I will definitely send a copy to Pradeep and Devesh, and you will know how deep the science is. And then uh, after the book, I uh, Mind Elements was founded in 2017. And uh, uh, in 2018, I got the copyright because I wanted to prove that this is an original piece of work, you know, uh, being in the competitive environment, I uh, wanted to challenge the tools that were there in the market. And that is how I uh, started Mind Elements. And today, uh, uh, the tool is no longer used just for pre-talent selection. It is used by organizations, for, by business leaders to know their business mind, to know their leadership quotient. Uh, it helps professionals to know their professional mind. It helps even students at a young age to know if they have the entrepreneurial mind. So here I am uh, <laughs> addressing you all and uh, I wish all the best to all the entrepreneurs in this journey because it's not an easy journey, but it is not difficult either. So it's a big challenge and I wish all of them all the best. Fantastic. With this beautiful insights, let us move to Devesh, who will give a deep understanding of his journey with Chatur Ideas. Thank you, Dr. Nathan. So my journey started uh, way back in 2008 and 9 with a failed idea. So what had happened was uh, I wanted to start something on my own, which was very similar to what today Ola has been doing, Ola Cabs has been doing. So at that point of time, I was fresh out of my MBA and I was, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I thought I just want to start this. So I built a business plan. I put all the numbers on the sheet and I went out to meet a few people and understanding from them, you know, what can I do? So I, I reached out to one gentleman in Mumbai who had a fleet of 450 cars under him. And I said, you know, this is what my plan is. This is what I wish to do. Uh, do you think I should go ahead? Because, you know, I, I, I need some support, some mentoring, some moral support to say that, you know, what you're doing is right because I was pretty young. I, I don't come from a business family, so I didn't know how business happens. So I needed some support. So I reached out to him. So he said, you know what, your business idea is pretty good, but you should stay out of this because what you're thinking is pretty similar to what radio caps are currently doing. And Radio Caps is a business where there is a lot of political nexus, there is a lot of manpower needed, there is a lot of uh, muscle power needed to manage this business. They're like, the moment you start this business, you will have people breaking your cars, vandalizing your cars, breaking your legs, uh, damaging your vehicles, harming your drivers. Do you want to get into all this? Do you have the bandwidth to manage all this? So I, I was a little shaken aback. I said, okay, uh, maybe he's right. I, I shouldn't do this, but I said, I should not give up so quickly. Let me talk to somebody else. Then I reached, reached out to somebody else who had a fleet of say around 250 odd cars under him, cabs under him. And I reached out to him and I said, you know, this is what our plan is. Apparently uh, that day his office was broken. And he said, Devish, are you seeing my cabin broken today? So I said, yes. He's like last evening, one of my drivers had a spat with the local political party. Those guys came, they broke my office. He's like, I don't have any issues in the next three days. I'll have this office up and running and I also break their offices. So in our business, it's pretty normal. I was like, okay, so this is the kind of business that are we uh, envisaging? 
so i said you know maybe these guys don't want me to succeed you know so they are they are i was pretty young so you know i was thinking that you know these guys don't want me to succeed so maybe they are just discouraging me let me go and talk to a few more other people i reached out to a few other guys everyone discouraged me and said you know what they wish you should get into a nice cushy job you don't you're not meant for something like this so i said okay fine so maybe i did 8 or 10 attempts and i then picked up a nice job in a wealth management firm was one of the youngest private bankers was drawing drawing a handsome salary was managing the creme de la creme de la creme of the country was investing for them in indian and international asset classes i was like life can't get better than this i'm so happy that i didn't pick up entrepreneurship i picked up this job i'm doing so well for myself and i was happily enjoying myself and then the year 2013 14 came in where i saw bhavesh agarwal who's the founder of ola caps entering the 1000 crore club and now that again shook me i am like he's a guy of similar age similar background similar idea that we thought of and if this guy can under a 1000 crore club why can't i what was lacking or what was missing that i couldn't reach there and he did there at that point of time again i had no support uh, i reached out to my cousin who was then heading the incubator at isb hyderabad i spoke with him i discussed my idea i said that you know this is what i wish to do i want to create an ecosystem where i can get mentors investors and entrepreneurs together because i feel that's what is lacking because if i had got that support maybe i would have been in the 1000 crore club today so he told me that you know what they wish what you're doing currently there are people doing that across india but in bits and pieces what you want to do is pretty holistic so go ahead with it so for me that moral support was more than enough and you know how it is it's like once bitten twice shy so since i'd already failed in a venture which i didn't start off uh i i didn't want to take a risk this time so i said i'll continue with my job i'll spend my evenings trying to spend some time with entrepreneurs trying to connect them with mentors trying to get them invested see if i can also be a part of that ecosystem and i spent close to 2 years uh doing that and eventually when i could see you know i've created an ecosystem where you know entrepreneurs are benefiting mentors are feeling good about this entire experience investors are enjoying their investments i said why don't i officially launch something so i had a pseudo chatur ideas wanted to launch that so at that point of time i reached out to my boss i said that you know i wish to start on my own that's again a long story how it happened for him to let me go but we'll save that for another day because we have paucity of time today so then finally i put down my papers i started off chatur ideas initially for the first say 18 months life was really tough uh, didn't have a strong revenue model didn't have a lot of people knowing about the brand people thought i'm pretty young to pull this off but eventually this all of these things became a kind of a plus point because people also thought he's too young let him let us help him and then we created a very strong board of mentors uh, from all the cxo levels of google bnp paribar deloitte kpmg etc so we have a strong mentor pool we have a strong investor pool started creating that for the first 18 months didn't see any success happening and then i gave myself two things uh one was in terms of time and other was in terms of uh money i said you know what i'm going to invest another one year into this if i don't see success happening maybe i take a step back i reassess and again enter into this or pick up a job but you know it's it's high time that i take a decision likewise i kept certain coppers aside i said if i burn this money and i'm not even 80% close to where i've reached i should take a step back and after 3 to 4 months i started success coming to us in fact what was happening for the first 18 months was our roots were getting stronger which i didn't realize at that point of time people were realizing what we are doing but we didn't see that fruits coming in the roots were getting stronger and you know you know how the bamboo shoots up right it has a strong root base and after it shoots up immediately and that's what happened with us and now it's been close to 7 years there's no looking back from a base of zero investors zero startup zero mentors today we sit uh working with more than 1100 startups we have close to 1500 investors from india and us we have more than 500 plus mentors from india and overseas among the top 5 players in india and stepping globally as well and as you rightly mentioned dr parab backed a lot of indian international awards as well so that's how the story began and that's where we are today fantastic fun to give a big round of applause to you thank because you because your journey is really inspiring i didn't know this much part of about your back end 
Anyways, you mentioned uh, Ola cabs. Uh, in my forthcoming book, UCO2, you will see uh, uh, Rehan Yar Khan, who is the co-founder of Ola and the investor for Ola very much mentioned because I've interviewed him and had lunch with him. So wow. please, one book will come to you soon. Surely. Then we talk about the next panelist, Pradeep Behra. So he will talk about his journey from a cushy job in the pharma industry to setting up the first, uh, first businessman, first level businessman as Tita Beta. Pradeep, Thank you. Thank you, yours. Nitin, sir. I'm wondering where to start, but let me start from 2016 when uh, I, I was supposed to change a job. So uh, it was when I thought like my uh, capabilities, competencies are less utilized, whatever capabilities I had. So then I thought of starting this organization and it was never DG. Uh, Davis G was telling there are always uh, uh, people who will drag you down. So I had heard a lot of things uh, that why you came to this area. I am basically from Odisha. Nobody knows uh, business uh, from a distance and nobody dealt with that. So eventually I took that step. I wanted to do something on my own. So I took that step and um, came to this uh, business, coined this uh, company named the Tina, Tita Vita and Algorithm. Now we have a very unique proposition from day one. So we present ourselves like this. If we go to a client place and can it be R&D, manufacturing or any regulatory, if they have a bottleneck or a critical issue, we would like to solve them. This is what our unique proposition is. And these companies are very big. Uh, let me tell you, Indian, international, many a times they have unsolved issues which are never been able to be solved. Uh, you can ask me why they cannot solve. There are many reasons to that. We can go into that later. But we could able to resolve few of their problems, very big pharma industry. Thereby, our proposition became technical solution provider. So currently we are a bit known as a technical solution provider in the industry. While initiating, I don't remember, I have met David in 2018 during January, March 2018. I was getting some uh, supervision from him on financial matters. So I'm a bit junior kind of thing in the forum now. Uh, Subhalakshmi Madam, we are using their uh, uh, services in our company. We are getting a lot of benefit out of it. Nitin sir has been my uh, guru. I mean, I mean, he has, uh, I mean, daat khai hai unse mene. <laughs> so, so in a way, the journey has been very tough. And I'll tell you, I mean, to to my expertise or experience, this is not going to end anywhere near soon. It is going to be tough throughout the uh lifetime we are living this entrepreneurial journey looking fantastic. forward to the next question fantastic, thank you very much fantastic so the journey you see my friends who are all watching the journey is more or less similar they found a need and they pursued with their ideas to solve a problem in society so i have a question the first question i have to ask all the three panelists out here. Is the entrepreneurial mind different from the ordinary mind? Is it different? If so, how do you justify it's a different mind? I'll give you two, two minutes to answer this question. Can I, Can I go first? Okay. Okay, and the junior one, I should get the chance. Okay. <laughs> uh, Nitin, sir, get the chance. Okay. <laughs> uh, Nitin, sir, I mean, I believe it is not mandatory to have a different kind of a mindset uh, to become or to aspire to be an entrepreneur. To my opinion, I would rather emphasize on the motive and execution part. Now, out of these two qualities, motive is something very personal in uh, the pre existing mind will prevail. Uh, motive can be selfless or selfish, depending upon the requirement that person has, but it is going to be the most important factor in my opinion. 
then it comes to execution so if i can answer your question in one go yes mindset of an entrepreneur need to be bit unique different uh, from the usual one with respect to the motive and execution okay Thank motive you. and execution is your take what about you dr shubhlakshmi okay uh, i will take a little longer because i have done a deep research in this area uh firstly i would like to say there is no ordinary mind especially in my tool it says that every mind is unique you know har insaan anokha hota hai and there is a role he has to play on this planet earth but having said this yes entrepreneurial mind is different than the other mindsets an entrepreneur is someone who solves the problem you know with uh, with a valuable solution that benefits others he is someone who can feel the customer's need he is someone who se- who can sense who is sensitive to the environment and then he brings about executing you know whatever the need is uh, uh, to uh, have a fruitful life so uh, through my research what i have seen is that there are certain characteristics of an entrepreneur which makes him a born leader you know such as uh everyone knows the the term you self reliant you know atmanirbhar then the most important is self sacrificing atmatyagi and then there are others like strong willed able to take decisions um, a risk taker adaptable taking charge or control of a situation so there are various others then an entrepreneur has an eye for details and leadership portion in good proportion you know he is a task oriented individual who can sequence an activity or a project or a life you know he has a drive and determination to be successful he they are natural team builders so they understand the mindsets and create teams uh, to create to you know uh, to execute their vision and goals so now here the mind of an entrepreneur is of a different raw material uski samagri hi alag hai because he has uh, under him eight leaders whom he needs to delegate responsibilities and then further down there are other team members below the eight leaders so you see it is not an ordinary mind it is it is a special kind of a, uh, a combination which is it is a combination ultimately i say of two persevering and passionate mindsets to create a strong leader with an ability to envision a great plan of action someone who is both strategic that is ranitik bolte hai hindi mein and uh, meticulous so you know ultimately a business mind and creativity these two aspects makes him apart makes great entrepreneurs apart from anyone else you know because they they have the knack to uh, see the world differently and they also to think out of the box so because they are able to generate many ideas they can also execute them through their products and services fantastic out of the box you said and devesh will answer this question <laughs> because in his profile he is saying that he always thought out of the box devesh all to you thank you dr nathan so basically the entrepreneur's mind is different from an ordinary mind and i agree with you on that because entrepreneurship is something that cannot be taught in it has to be come from within इट्स लाइक like, आप शेर के बच्चे को शिकार करना नहीं सिखा सकते हो उसको आता है शिकार करने बींग एन ऑन्टरप्रनर अफकोर्स यू कैन सेट द गाइडलाइंस बट इट इज समथिंग दैट कम्स फ्रॉम विद इन एंड एन ऑन्टरप्रन ऑलवेज अ हसलर ही वॉन्ट्स टू फिगर आउट अ सोल्यूशन ही वुड नॉट वर्क इन सॉल्विंग अ प्रॉब्लम जस्ट टू मेक मनी ही इज वर्किंग टू सॉल्व बिकॉज ही इज पैशनेट अबाउट इट ही वॉन्ट्स टू हेल्प पीपल एट लार्ज एंड अफकोर्स एज अ रेवेन्यू मॉडल where not only him but the entire team makes money or the entire ecosystem or stakeholders make money in that entire journey so for an entrepreneur it's more about an exponential growth where there is a deep impact that's created on the society and at the same time a good revenue model as well and you can back this with n number of successful entrepreneurs right from travis kalanick of uber or anupam mittal of shadi.com or vss of ptm you figure any one of these guys out and you will understand why and how they are different than an ordinary person and what that builds to make it bigger fantastic also another thing if i may uh, add on to this an entrepreneur 
always keeps trying for him he embraces failures he is he, for him it's not only a stepping stone for success but that is actually a stone needed for his success because the more failure he takes the more resilient it gets so you know for an entrepreneur it is like if the ecosystem is supporting him it pushes him harder but if there is resistance it makes him unstoppable so that's how an entrepreneur's mindset is that's how he thinks would would want to say a quote before i sign off is an entrepreneur's thought process is he dares to think he dares to dream he dares to fail and fall he dares to rise again and succeed thank fantastic. you fantastic fantastic devesh who can know an entrepreneur better than you because you have trained more than 34000 entrepreneurs with your academy so hats off to you for this noble job that you have taken under chatur ideas having said that let me ask a common question to all of you all because the line is uncertain the path is uncertain the path is unknown in this unknown area that you all are all venturing what are the major one or two challenges that you all came across in your journey pradeep you can begin oh thank you challenges are many let me tell you challenges are many uh, one challenge which i faced from day one is uh, from a personal side so i believe not many entrepreneurs also face that but the personal side is uh, very awkward you cannot handle it uh, in one way so you have a job background you were an employee 9 to 6 job and you left the job to start an entrepreneurial career and you sit in the home for at least two day three day four day one week two week then you feel the pain or sense of uh, you can say uncomfortableness so that is kind of kind of you have to you have to face that issues or you have to tackle that uh, constructively uh, apart from that challenge uh, i would like to emphasize on uh, at least uh, uh, one two two aspects one is over confidence and second one is demotivating element see uh, in during one point of view, i was very much uh, it, it's like the confidence level exceeded then i realized i have to get back to the ground think in a very basic way don't jump up the road i mean try to do very basic things what is necessary at the nascent stage so that that is one thing i would definitely suggest that uh, the newly going entrepreneurs will definitely face this challenge and they need to control their emotion of getting over confident second one is the motivating element out of 10 uh, out of 10 you'll find six people who will do the motivate you definitely 60% is the minimum value i'm talking so 40% will encourage you stick to them so that is the way you you have that uh, emotional strength ignore these demotivating element whenever it is possible so one is on fighting your own negative self uh, and 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 you have to fight the outer negative things these are the two 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 different aspects which i have faced personally okay fantastic let's hear it from devish what were the challenges you faced in your journey so uh the challenge started from the day uh, i wanted to quit my job so so let me uh, st- share that part which i said maybe we'll keep it for another day but uh, maybe on your question maybe we can do it today itself so uh, for me before i decided to put down my papers i was thinking that you know i have to actually you know, rely on my savings because as i mentioned at that point of time not thought of a revenue model for the business so i said that i have to lose out on the luxury of getting that message at the end of every month that a salary has been credited to your bank account and won't be seeing that salary coming in for the next so many months before i start actually having a revenue in place so that was the first thing that struck my mind but having said that i when i went to my boss to put down my papers he played the carrot and the stick with me so the carrot was he he offered me uh a 95% hike on my salary which is almost doubling it and for me that was actually a challenge because you know you are getting a salary doubled 
So at that point of time, actually, I thought about it. I took a back seat. I said, okay, let me get back to you. I thought over it for the next two days. I realized what's the risk of leaving this good salary and pick, picking up entrepreneurship. And that learning is something that I give to all my portfolio companies as well, plus mentees, et cetera, is that, you know, entrepreneurship is not about taking risk. It's about taking calculated risk. So I calculated what are the risks in actually leaving this and getting into entrepreneurship. And I thought it's worth the risk. And at that point of time, I, I went back to him and I said, you know, it's a superb offer, but I would uh, deny this because I have made up my mind. I want to get into entrepreneurship. He saw the carry did not work. So he used the stick method. He said that, you know what, you're pretty young right now. And anyone and everyone who was doing this business is in their early 50s. He's like, you know, you're far, far away from there. Do you think anyone will take you in seriously? Would anyone even listen to you? And at that point of time, it actually, again, gave me a little bit of a jitters that, you know, what he's saying is sensible. But then I'm like, you know what, I have already failed in a startup, which I didn't even start off. Let me start this. If I fail, I've thought about the risks. Let me get into it. And I decided, you know what, I'm, I'm going to get into entrepreneurship. And that was actually the biggest challenge. What he talked about, people didn't take me seriously. He was like, you're pretty young. You don't even come from the startup ecosystem. You come from a wealth management background. Why would any startup come to you for advice or to raise funds or for anything for that matter, which was true. Startups didn't take me seriously. I reached out to mentors. They didn't take me seriously. But somehow the passion of keep striking hard, keep going on, putting in those 16 hours of work daily made. And, you know, that is one thing that as today, as, as a investor and a mentor to so many companies, I've realized as well. Now we can sense people through. We can talk to them for five minutes and we know that, you know, ye banda kar paega ki nahi kar paega. and that's what these people had when they could see that, you know, this guy is being highly perseverant and he's a kid. Let us give him a chance. So the thing which was negative for me turned into positive. They said, he's a kid, give him a chance and not the other way around. He's a kid who will trust him, which was initially for the first couple of months, but that turned into, let us give him a chance because he's trying so hard. He's keep on pestering us, keep on being perceived. Let us give him a chance from their trust to me putting in the hard work. That combination became a fatal combination. It was not one plus one, but it became one plus one eleven. And from there, that challenge was overcome. From being a platform in helping entrepreneurs with mentoring, investing. Today, I myself have been mentoring so many startups. I have invested into multiple startups from the last so many years, seen success somewhere, seen shutdown somewhere, but overall has been a pleasant journey. But yes, that's been the challenges that I've gone through and overcome them. Fantastic. With this, I hear uh, Shakespeare saying, Life, where is thy sting? Where, where do you feel the pain? And the pain is the journey. That is the beauty of life. If there is no pain, there is no life. Unless we experience that pain, then we get the pleasure of living life. With this, let me hear from Dr. Shubhlakshmi, her challenge in her journey. Uh, you know, yesterday there was a very interesting session of Mr. Shiv Khera and I, I took a lot of, there were many takeaways. And one of the important thing he said is problem is a sign of life. If there is no problem, you know, uh, as long as there is life, there will be problem. And the day we don't have a problem, we will be dead. So I completely resonate with him. And as Pradeep said, that entrepreneurial journey is full of challenges. You know, the, you know if you are able to overcome them, it's great. So likewise, even I face many challenges. I'll just share one or two. One, the first one was that the tool wasn't online when I started the business. And I was under the impression that manual intervention here you know, ho jayega. but I realized that it was too time consuming. So I have a very good technical team now who, with the help of whom I was able to make it uh, at least till the evaluation stage an AI driven tool. And uh, the uh, uniqueness of my tool is after the evaluation, after you know the mindset, the report is customized. So it is an 18 page, which is very clear, no confusion. And uh, the entire business mind and leadership quotient is revealed in that report. The second uh, challenge which I felt was that people said, Ye to unique, aapka kaise alag hai, dusre tool se. and uh, they wanted that uh, you know, copyright thing, 
uh, on my tool. And uh, believe me, in 2017, I had already published my book, Core Mindsets at Work, where I have revealed openly the tool using an AGPL formula. I said that there are 11 types of mindsets. Now, here I go to a solicitor to say, see, I want to make it copyright. He says, yeah, aapka already published. Ho gaya hai. So anything that goes for copyright should be unpublished material. So he told me, aapko kuch aur research karke, you'll have to create a new version. So I took that up as a challenge because that is the only thing that would be unique with the tool. And believe me, I had to spend more time. And ultimately, I created the tool with a COBS formula, and uh, which concludes that there are 17 types of mindsets, you know, existing and every mindset is unique. But uh, ultimately, I thank Mr. Singhania for guiding me through this process. And within one and a half year, I got the copyright in the first attempt. So challenges to her din hai, you know, we are meeting different types of um, uh, people, different types of business leaders, different challenges in the business environment. So I take this up as, you know, as any other routine work for me. I don't take this as a problem. So it's become a part of life. Fantastic. Very nice. In fact, the journey has been saying, if you look at the models of businesses across the world, the pioneering nation has been America. And the pioneering thought leaders of America, the Henry Fords, the Andrew Carnegie's, they started with practically nothing, no education and in poverty and built empires of automobile, empires of steel. So the journey can begin at the thought level to take it to the highest level. And how is it possible if we can see the vision in the future? They saw a vision of themselves and therefore they created it in that era where the mobile was not there, where proper roads were not there, nothing was available as infrastructure and yet they created a mark. Having said that, let me ask a question to all my panelists over here. A new civilization is taking birth. We call it the digital civilization. For this digital civilization, this future unfolding in front of us, what is your take? How do you look at your journey, your company to address this future? So Pradeep, you can begin. Okay. So I, I will segregate this journey as four part. Uh, first thing, um, for a first generation entrepreneur to start the journey, uh, guts or the courage is the biggest key. So uh, the, the plan, strategy, everything remains one part, but the first step, what you have to take from within yourself, that's the biggest key uh, to go with the entrepreneur journey. Very next thing, what you'll require in the list of four, five things which you have to do must, but this is what I feel the first one. In my journey, I'll cite another three uh, points. One is consultancy part. When I started this, then I realized it's going to take some time to have this R&D in place. So I started with this consultancy thing. Now, consultancy has a different kind of image. 50 ka hona thoda easy hona then people treat you as a consultant. I mean, for me, bachcha hai karega kya? I had to go to Sun Pharma, convince them for a day ki me kar paunga, and they are bees. So at, at the end, I could able to solve the problem. Those are few milestones which gave me a lot of uh, confidence uh, so that this process can continue further. Second one, uh, which is uh, I, I learned to say no politely because we are having a very unique proposition as an organization. We cater to very unique problems uh, for big industries. So uh, we have to deny or say no for the routine activities. So this has been a challenge, very big challenge. People used to tease us. Kaam ke liye mana kar hai. So in a way, we presented our disadvantages to say no to them. So that's a different kind of story, but we have to deal with that, not to dilute our image. As a, as a solution provider to the industry. Third one, uh, I could able to uh, gather a six member team. Uh, as of now, we have six member core management team. 
which are like minded now i i take it a great pride to say that i i did that best everybody is aligned to this uh, company's uh, goal journey so uh, to my uh, to my opinion i mean uh, if one thing i'll be cherishing uh, throughout my entrepreneurial journey is how i created a team so that's the very one thing i am very proud of thank you nitin sir fantastic this so is what my journey building becomes the essence for the future enterprise remember this my friends you have to understand you have to build culture you have to build team and you have to move with your people and technology to the next world there are some questions kavita yes yes sir definitely uh, we have got one question on web uh, the entrepreneur wants to ask that uh, how a entrepreneur get some energy to face challenges when he finds in himself alone in the journey sometimes yes 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 all entrepreneurs are alone lonesome people they require to get that self energy from self motivating so i leave it to anyone to answer devesh can you answer this surely so you know as dr nitin rightly pointed out entrepreneurship is a lonely journey and there are many times that you know you feel depressed you feel low and you don't know what to do about it at that point of time you have to actually look at your goal and and go back and see what's the reason why you started entrepreneurship what's the reason why you began this journey and when you look at that goal your energy will start coming up now it's very easy to say how to ensure that that comes in there are two ways to do it one is you read a lot of self help books right the so like rested a chef khera came in he has written a lot of beautiful self help books uh, robin sharma has written a lot of self help books these books really help you to keep your mind stronger because if you are in an entrepreneur what actually matters is not the skill set but how strong is your mind and you can make your mind strong by having access to these books or podcasts which actually makes you a strong mentally spiritually which helps you achieve your dream another thing that you should have and what you should have i'll begin with the doha so kabir ka ek doha hai jo kehta hai guru gobind dono khade kaake lagu paaye balihari guru dev ki jo govind dio dikhaye which means if i have my teacher and my god both in front of me whom should i bow, bow down to first i should bow down to my teacher who actually showed me the path to god you should have a mentor in your life because a mentor becomes a sounding board for you if you have a mentor a mentor would have actually seen more successes and more failures than you are envisaged or seen in your life till now have a mentor who can actually guide you in your paths of darkness and be your strength in your paths of glory so having a mentor and having a self help book these two combinations really work well to ensure that you are always charged up full with energy every morning you get up you stand up you show up and you perform fantastic devesh that's an inspiring note yes Kavita? one follow up question on this yesterday also same point was uh, rolling around so the follow up question is how to find a perfect mentor the correct mentor actually so sometimes we get a mentor all the mentors and gurus are perfect but sometimes uh, someone uh, does not uh, is not able to recognize the situation well and does not uh, does his mentorship well so sometimes we end up uh, getting wrong mentor so how to uh, judge that who is the correct mentor for me or for the entrepreneurs who is looking for the mentor here also i think so devesh is the expert judge who can answer this question having dealt with mentors and entrepreneurs yes please so so i'll say this on a lighter note but it has a lot of serious uh, impact on this so you know when we look for a prospect a uh, bride or a groom to get married what do we do right we have multiple meetings we ensure are we clicking so after say quoting each other for say a month or two and then we realize okay i think we click and then we get married right the same happens with mentoring and with a mentee a mentee needs to spend some time with the mentor have some conversations and i'm sure there is a frequency so the entire world works on a frequency so there are reasons why you know when we meet someone we click with that person and when someone we meet 100 times we never click right 
it's because of the frequency so here if the mentee and the mentor have say two three four five meetings they both will be sure are they meant for each other or no and if they click they are the right mentor so it's more from the heart then more from the mind so it's more of an art than a science so i think that's the way you figure out the right mentor thank you thank you mr devesh chavla uh, over to you uh, dr nitin yeah now coming to two factors which we began our conversation one was the business mind which we spoke about what about the leadership portion how do you derive because when you look at the leaders of the past if you see why we consider the war leaders the ultimate because they led their people over death the army knew that they would be killed yet they fought and they won so that was the ultimate and that was the ultimate in that era of warship in business how do you get that leadership quotient identify it and take it forward dr shublashmi can you identify the leaders in your uh, mind map yes in fact uh, the the unique value proposition of this tool core mindset mapping is it helps to identify a leader from a performer so generally most of all of them are performers but how do you find who is a leader generally what happens is organization mistake a performer to be a leader you see they start at executive level then they uh, march towards manager level they are very punctual they are hard working and then the 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 ceo or the general manager thinks chalo isko hum leader of the department banate hain but is he inspiring does his work inspire his people does his team members uh, uh, inspire of, of coming on time are they able to deliver the goods on time so it is very crucial that while choosing team members you have to know whether you are choosing a leader or a performer and we always give a classic example to understand this uh, uh, between sachin tendulkar and mahendra singh dhoni you know both of them are excellent performers but when you see mahendra dhoni's performance we won many championships under his captaincy in fact saurav ganguly rahul dravid sachin these three who have been once upon a captain of indian cricket team have actually played under mahendra singh dhoni's leadership sachin tendulkar is a good player he is technically good but as a leader he wasn't successful we we, we didn't win championships and even he himself agrees in fact even brian lara in an interview when he was asked about leadership he said that uh, you know like sachin me like sachin uh you know we were not able to be good leaders you know so uh, so very very crucial and uh, you know today many people say uh, startups uh, technology and innovation they are uh, exciting and if effective instruments for transforming india but you know this thought of transforming india requires a lot of work and if every citizen of our country takes this as his responsibility i don't think so it will be very far that we will be one of the top nations you know in the world so for that change transformative change leadership should be in higher proportion in individuals they should be able to take initiative and take accountability to whatever they take up in life so uh, so we can formally conclude that in along with entrepreneurship we have to build the leadership portion in our country mera bharat mahan can only be achieved through a clear cut thought on leadership yes. we have to walk amongst the great leaders of the world and show that we can perform the best to do that it is a spirit and that is why this topic this session understanding the mind of the entrepreneur plays an important role and devesh has made it very clear that it is the mind that scripts the future the mind that reads the future the mind that decides how the future steps should be taken the mind can visualize and that creation of the mind is what every entrepreneur should look at 
the creation of his individual entrepreneurial mind so taking this to the next next uh, maybe final uh, question because of time there are 6 7 minutes what is that word of encouragement as you are evolved entrepreneurs what will you give as guidance or that word of encouragement to the other entrepreneurs who are walking the journey of creating business empires and business enterprises can i have a word from each one of you i can uh, i'll take up this answer in fact uh, uh, you know uh, in continuation to what i said to have this nation transforming india a lot of work has to be done if an individual who is aspiring to be an entrepreneur if he observes his own life you know from the time he wakes up till he goes to bed if he comes across a problem which he feels is not addressed or is not addressed properly you know either it is not addressed properly or not addressed at all if he is a critical thinker he will think of an idea how to solve the problem okay now this idea he should be passionate about this idea that it is going to address the issue the critical issue that we are facing in the country he needs to know whether he has a resources to be able to execute that idea in the form of product or service he should know whether he is capable sometimes um, uh, youngsters or entrepreneurs i have seen they come out with brilliant ideas but they may not be able to present so do they need to have somebody do they need a support system do they need a co-founder or do they need more team members to execute his vision so that is what is very important because if you are not passionate about your product and service if you don't feel from within that is go we have to address is then nothing will move forward so ultimately it is discovery of the need which leads to discovery of the idea you know which i would like to tell all the aspiring people and uh, we have people like devesh and many others who are supporting them so you have to only reach out to them with passion because there are many people applying like how in the job market many people apply but they see the passion in the eye your body language how involved you are with your project and only then it will be successful so i would suggest that they have to be passionate about what they are doing what is the word coming out from devesh how do you encourage this people then so you know i feel that these every entrepreneur should have three things with them uh, i call it as a i call it as a pdf so p stands for perseverance d stands for discipline and f stands for focus i'll take a minute to explain the three uh, if you look at colonel sanders who was the founder of kfc at the age of 60 65 he knocked 1009 doors before he achieved success we all know about thomas edison who discovered electricity there were 10000 failed experiments Absolutely. before electricity came into light so that's the kind of perseverance one needs to have one needs to keep trying until you achieve success that's number 1 number 2 is discipline an entrepreneur should be highly disciplined in its way of working you know we see many a time that an entrepreneur is working very frugally dronacharya was teaching the kauravs and pandavas archery there he calls duryodhan and he says what all can you see he says i can see the bird in the air i can see some uh, clouds in the background he said okay move aside he calls in yudhishthir he says what all can you see he says i can see the bird's face the bird's eyes the bird's beak he said okay when you move aside he calls in arjun he says what all can you see he says i can see only the bird's eye he again asks him what all can you see he says i can see only the bird's eye he like shoot and hits the bird's eye and we all know that he was the best archer of his time that's the laser sharp focus an entrepreneur needs to have once you've decided what's your goal is just work towards that just traverse that path so i think having this perseverance discipline and focus is what my two cents is for every entrepreneur fantastic the last word goes to pradeep i'll take 30 seconds yeah vision has to be fixed you cannot change that i would only advise advise out of all of it create smaller milestones so that you can take some happiness out of it by achieving them vision can can be achieved in a long run don't wait for it create smaller milestones so that you can gather some happiness and you you, you become energetic 
Thank you. Fantastic. Kavita is nodding over there and pointing a finger at me. So Kavita, the floor is all yours now. We are on time, in fact. Yeah, you are definitely on yeah. time. Yeah. Because I have a red signal behind me to uh, signify the time that it's over. <laughs> <laughs> what a great session by all of you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nitin Parab, Dr. Shubhalakshmi Acharya, Thank Mr. You. Pradeep Thank Behra, you. Mr. Devesh Shavla for uh, throwing light on the topic. And I'm sure... Uh, our entrepreneurs must have got some takeaways, many takeaways from uh, this session. So thank you all of you. We'll uh, move on to the next session. Our Dr. Praveen Parmar has to say something, I think. Yes, doctor. No, I think uh, yeah, it was a really wonderful session and uh, it was uh, great to know about Devesh and uh, Pratip about your story and you know the things you have shared. And uh, Dr. Subhlakshmi, personally, I want to try the tool first uh, because yeah. you, know, you are doing something amazing. Right. And Nitinji, uh, yeah, you are your superhero. So I don't have anything for you. Yeah. So it was indeed a great session. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining and uh, contributing to this particular event. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everyone. And thank uh, viewers and entrepreneurs, please. Do not forget to subscribe Vyapar Jagat TV. We are live on it. And don't also forget to uh, click on bell icon so that you get, uh, get all the notifications of success stories, uh, business stories, and uh, all the videos which uh, are posted on Vyapar Jagat TV. And uh, our hashtag is Mera Vyapar, Meri Pehchan. 